So hi uh, everyone. My name is Rahul. I'm a software engineer uh, at Intel, working for the Network Platform Group. And with me joining is Jen from VMware. And we are here to introduce uh, VMware's new vSphere's new ENS stack, Enhanced Network Stack, mainly focused for uh, NFV applications. So as we all know, network uh, function virtualization uh, deployments are happening at a rapid, rapid pace, and all the fixed functions are running on a dedicated hardware, are moving from hardware to the software or a virtual component on a general purpose server. So the key thing here to consider is your performance should not be affected because of your compute, storage, and network workload consolidation. So how do we do that? So let's, have, let's try and have an optimized top to bottom stack solution so that you still have a throughput which is high enough to support the NFE workload, as well as you also have the lowest latency possible. So in order to do that, VMware launches, uh, is launching uh, an enhanced network stack with a, v, with a new vSwitch, and Intel is proud to be the first partner to release the pull mode drivers for this stack. So going a little backwards, uh, Intel has been very active in the development of DPDK since its beginning. Uh, back in 2014, if I remember, DPDK Summit, uh, VMware and Intel jointly presented uh, the benefits of the VMX Net3 driver and the model itself, uh, which overcame the emulated E1000 model shortcomings by saving a lot of uh, VM exits. And there were a couple of more op optimizations. So this mainly optimized your guest stack, and we got a very good performance in the guest, but that's not enough. So your host, host stack still needs to be optimized uh, to meet the stringent uh, NFA requirements. Um, if you see the current vSphere native drivers, they operate in an interrupt mode with a lot of async calls. So by leveraging the same DPDK concepts learned over the years, VMware and Intel developed, uh, collaborated to develop this ENS uh, stack with a, v, with a new vSwitch, which basically now pulls uh, for, oops, Sorry, sorry about that. Which now basically pulls continuously for the packets, and uh, which also gives you a higher performance uh, using for the uh, mainly required for the NFE applications. So, um, moving on to the next slide. Um, so, these are the essential DPDA components that inspired this stack. We now have a vSwitch that is continuously polling for packets, and we also provide the poll mode drivers uh, to, for the necessary RX and TX burst functions, along with the other functions for the uplink. Uh, Intel, uh, Intel is uh, introducing the IXGB and ENS and I40 ENS drivers for the first time for this stack, uh, which will be uh, the poll mode drivers uh, According uh, pole mode drivers, in addition to the existing vSwitch uh, native drivers, it also apart from polling, we also use. Uh, I mean, ENS also uses. Uh, ENS also uses um, uh, same MBUF structure, similar, to, which is quite similar to the DPDK. It also uses uh, two meg of large pages, which are similar to the uh, Linux huge pages. And there are other features like core pinning, batch processing, uh, which are similar to the DBDK, which are used in this stack. And Jin will talk about them uh, in detail uh, in the next slides when he talks about the ENS architecture. So from a user or a VNF or a VM's perspective, uh, you now have an option to choose a faster data path, which gives you, uh, which can provide, uh, which, through which you can receive or transmit your network traffic but using the same VMX3 interface. So with that, I hand it over to the Jin to go over the details of the ENS architecture. Thank you. Does it have a razor? Sorry? Oh, the upper one. Doesn't have. Hi, my name is Jin Hyo uh, from VMware engineering team. So like Raul explained, uh, NFE applications usually require, I mean, drives much higher packet rate and require very low packet loss. So to meet those uh, much, uh, much uh, stringent uh, requirement, I mean performance requirement, uh, VMware has been uh, working with Intel to implement a 
completely new networking stack um, uh, to, uh, to better support NFA, NFB applications. So this uh, new networking stack called uh, Enhanced Networking Stack, uh, ENS. And so to implement this new uh, data path, we employed uh, DPDK's techniques, various DPDK te techniques. I'm saying here the employed because we are not just uh, copying the DPDK source code and putting it in ESX uh, because we already have uh, uh, existing components in ESX kernel that does the similar thing. For example, like uh, if you look at the right side of the diagram, you will see that the two megabytes heap and fast lab. So this is, uh, for example, like fast lab is very similar to uh, uh, similar to memory pool in DPDK. So FastLab is a memory uh, kind of packet, pa packet allocation interface similar to uh, memory pool, but it is, it is much flexible in, uh, so that uh, it can, it, it will dynamically change the memory allocation size. So it's much more flexible than, um, than, uh, uh, than the memory pool interface in DPDK. Also, we already have this uh, two megabytes la uh, large page uh, heap interface, or kind of we 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 uh, we reuse those uh, components. So, so mainly we are using uh, mbuff and then the uh, buffering and hash table uh, components from DPDK, and mostly all other things uh, we we use our existing uh, vSphere's components. And another difference is that uh, we put this, uh, we implement and employ these DPDK techniques inside the kernel, which is a little different from uh, other, like Linux, uh, all these DPDK application running in the get, uh, in the user space. That's that's uh, kind of another difference. So with these uh, new or existing components, uh, we have to re-implement the uh, VMX Net3 virtual device. So we re-implement this virtual device using new MBUF, MBUF interface. And then the uh, virtual switch, also we, we kind of re-implemented it. Uh, now we use uh, uh, well-known flow cache technique. And then, the, of course, Intel is working on uh, Polymer driver for ENS uh, networking stack. So this is a, kind of a new data path, and in addition to this coexists with the um, existing vSwitch uh, networking data path. So user can choose uh, ENS uh, if they want to run NFV, and they can still use the existing uh, default stack. And we deliver, we, uh, ENS yields much higher, much better, much, much better performance compared to existing uh, networking stack, uh, while still we uh, provide these well-known features DLS and high availability and and vMotion live uh, uh, and uh, live migration and ENS is uh, will be part of the NSX products. NSX is the VMware's um, network virtualization and security products, basically to better support uh, software defined networking and software defined data centers. So it will be part of the NSX, and then the user can use the uh, OpenStack. For example, VIO interface uh, to configure and install ENS virtual switch uh, using VMS Neutron OpenStack uh, uh, OpenStack plugin. So let me uh, okay. Let me uh, explain some of the components. If you look at the uh, purple uh, box, there uh, so uh, there are dedicated pinned cores. I think of DPDK is the same. Uh, DPDK, OBS DPDK, all these guys are the same thing. So we use the, we give dedicated uh, cores for running L cores, and uh, the benefit is not just uh, uh, not just uh, reducing the overhead of interrupt handling. It's more like uh, the major benefit I we see is that uh, doing so reduces the. Uh, 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 context switching, I mean CPU context uh, switching latency, so that this can lead to much, much lower packet loss. I think that's one of the major benefits when we run a, a kind of performance test. And the flow cache I kind of, kind of explained. And then we also use SSE techniques 
to implement the memory copy and uh, hash key calculation. Next slide. Or oh, hash key uh, comparison. So I think I briefly explained that uh, dedicated uh, CPU allocation to L cores, and we use polling. Uh, and then the, oh, okay. So ENS has uh, its own load balancing uh, techniques uh, to make sure that the VM and related L cores uh, system threads are running on the same NUMA node. If this, if related threads are running on different NUMA node, then our experience tell me, t tells us that the performance kind of drops almost by half, so pretty bad. So we need to make sure that the uh, VM and related L cores should be running on the same NUMA node, uh, which we are doing. And memory allocation, of course, NUMA aware, and then the, we, uh, we use large pages. I mean, large pages is a uh, uh, vSphere's term, uh, uh, terminology. So we only, for now, we only support two megabytes huge pages. I, we didn't see, yeah, so let's just start, yeah. yeah. And then the, we, we use mbuff, and this mbuff uh, packet representation is uh, quite simpler than our internal packet representation, and this gives us uh, uh, these safe cycles in the CPU, uh, uh, packet initialization, and also reduces cache misses. So that's one, one good thing of using this uh, simpler packet representation. And then the user flow cache uh, also improves the efficiency of uh, L2 uh, the virtual switching. And then we try to avoid uh, using locks as much as possible. Because uh, even without contention, just, just calling into spin lock or calling, to, calling this atomic operations, that just takes, uh, takes away uh, valuable cycles. So we, we are trying to uh, reduce the, uh, not to use uh, locks as much as possible. And then the VMX3 optimization. So in the previous slide, I told you guys that uh, um, we, have, we implement kind of a new VMX3 device drivers using MBUF. In addition to that, we also heavily optimize other things. Uh, it's too much detail, I don't wanna uh, talk about it, but so basically, we re-implemented re the VMX Net 3 device itself, and we also applied some of the kind of techniques uh, uh, and then improved the performance in the gas driver side too. So this, uh, so we, I think we already upstream this uh, new uh, gas driver to both DPTK uh, DPK drivers and then the VM kernel, uh, Linux kernel, uh, uh, in kernel uh, VMX3 device drivers. And uh, SS instructions I kind of uh, already uh, discussed. So all these things uh, help us to improve performance quite a bit. And then the, I briefly go over uh, the, the Intel Polymer driver side. Uh, for initial, uh, re, uh, Initially, Intel is working on two uh, type of device drivers. One is one for IXGV and the other for I40 uh, devices. And then the uh, and features like uh, basic features, checksum, and then multi-queue filtering. The, the, this multi-queue is net queue uh, for uh, in vSphere terms. And we also will support the Mac, uh, Mac VLAN filtering and Geneva offload, VXLAN offload, things like that. Okay, so I guess the most uh, kind of important thing is performance. So compared to existing uh, default data fed, default vSwitch performance, the new, I mean, the performance of the ENS uh, networking stack, ENS, is like a three to five X uh, better in terms of packet rate. And this uh, also, one good thing is that uh, if you add more L cores, uh, the, the packet rate performance uh, scales linearly. And then the uh, packet loss is now is much lower because we use dedicated CPU and polling. So there's uh, CPU scheduling latency is not going to be uh, incur packet loss, uh, uh, packet loss anymore. So packet loss will be overall very small. And for uh, for the similar reasons, uh, uh, jitter and latency is also uh, low. Okay, so I think this is it. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Jin and uh, Raul.